Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul. As we've mentioned the last couple weeks, we have our Lenten mission this week on Monday and Tuesday. And I'd like to take a moment to just welcome John Angotti, our speaker, to St. Paul's. He'll be playing with us today and for the next couple days. So welcome, John. Thank you for coming. He'll be speaking to us at the end of Mass today, so if you're usually someone who likes to leave right after communion, I invite you maybe to just stick around for a couple more minutes and uh, hear what John has to say today. So thank you all for coming. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exalt, and be satisfied at her consoling breast. Welcome to St. Paul Church, and thank you for joining us this morning. We especially welcome those of you who are joining us for the first time. We gather now as God's holy people to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. And now we invite you to stand as we begin our liturgy. Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with his spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. through your Son, reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we invite the children to come forward for the Liturgy of the Word.
A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who was tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want, there is nothing I shall want. The Right pass for his namesake, even though I walk in dark valleys, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. So 
Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I'm uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on the eyes of the man. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Solomon, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had been with him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some say it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. 
He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Silomon and wash. So I went there and I washed and was able to see. And he said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. And they brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees asked him how he was able to see. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such things? And there was a division among them. And so they said to the blind men again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. And they asked them, is this your son who you say was blind from birth? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He can speak for himself. And his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, go ask him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? And do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. And the man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. If unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man... If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. And they answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you were trying to teach us. Then they threw him out. And when Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see might see and those that do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard, heard about this and they said to him, surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you were saying, we see. So your sin remains. It's the gospel of the Lord.
Good morning. You wonder why there's a different gospel, right? We are in the second scrutiny for the candidates, and I want to express, I think, gratitude and joy for Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin. They're going to be baptized in the Holy Saturday, Easter Vigil. How is important, my dear brothers and sisters, to recognize the sacrament of baptism <clears throat> as the first of all, the first sacrament, of course, but is uh, the sacrament of reconciliation in, w in, a, in one way, and the second way is to say, I want to belong to you, O Lord. So on these Sundays of the first, second, and the third scrutiny, the liturgy takes us on a true and proper baptism route to the test of young gospel. Last Sunday, uh, Jesus promised the gift of living water to the Samaritan woman. Today, by healing the man born blind, he reveals himself as the light of the world. Next Sunday, in raising his friend Lazarus, he will present himself as the resurrection and the life. So does water, light, light, and life are symbols of baptism, the sacrament that immerses believers in the mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ, liberating them from the slavery of sin and giving them eternal life. Jesus operates illumination on two levels, a physical level and a spiritual level. The blind person first received the sight of the eyes and then is led to faith in the Son of Man that is Jesus Christ. The doctors of the law who were there in a group persist in not admitting the miracle and ask the healed men insidious questions, but he disconcerts them with the power of reality one thing I know, I was blind, and now I see. Amid the distrust and hostility of those who surround him and interrogate him, he takes a route that leads him to, gradu to gradually discover the identity of the one who opened his eyes and confess his faith in him. At first, he considered Jesus as a prophet, then, he recognized him as the one who comes from God. And finally, he welcomed him as the Messiah and possessed himself before him. He who was blind discovered his new identity. He is now a new creature, able to see his life in the world around him in a new light because he has entered into communion with Christ. He has entered into another dimension. He is no longer a beggar marginalized by the community. He is no longer a slave to blindness and prejudice. My dear brothers and sisters, sin, S-I-N, it's like a dark veil that covers our face and prevents us from clearly seeing ourselves and the world. But there is a good news. The good news is that the Lord forgives our sins. He takes away shadows and darkness and gives us new light. This Lenten period as an opportunity and a valuable time to approach the Lord, asking for his mercy in different forms that the Mother Church proposes to us. And we begin tomorrow with a special program for Lent to have more opportunities to approach Jesus in this parish. So the healed blind man, 
who now sees both with the physical eyes and the eyes of the soul, is the image of every baptized person who immersed in grace has been pulled out of the darkness and placed in the light of faith. Each one of us is called to receive the divine light in order to manifest it with our whole life. The first Christians, the theologians of the first centuries, used to say that the community of Christians that is the church is the mystery of the moon because it gave light, but it was not its own light. It was the light it received from Christ. We also can be the mystery of the moon, giving light received from the sun, which is Christ the Lord. St. Paul reminds us of this today. Live as children of light. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The seed of new life placed in us in the sacrament of baptism is like the spark of a fire which purifies us, burns the evil in our hearts, and allows us to shine and illuminate with the light of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, let us allow ourselves to be healed by Jesus, who wants to give us the light of God. Let us confess our blindness. Let us confess our transgressions. Let us confess our false pride. Let us confess our sins. May Mary, wait. Did you go to confession already? It's a great opportunity of this season of Lent to go to the reconciliation, to confess our sins. May Mary, most holy, who by conceiving Christ in the flesh, get the world, the true light, help us to do this. Amen. Everyone can remain seated. Over the past year, our candidates for the sacraments at Easter have been preparing very much so to be baptized, to receive First Communion, and to be confirmed at the Easter Vigil. Today, we celebrate a very important rite or part of liturgy as part of their journey, and the second of the three scrutinies. So today, we celebrate the second scrutiny for our elect, Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin. We celebrate these scrutinies as a community to uncover and heal all that is weak and to strengthen all that is upright and good. So in the name of the St. Paul Parish community, I ask Robert and Natalie, Emily, and Robin, and in support of them, their sponsors and the parish RCIA team, to please come forward and stand on the altar. I invite everyone to kneel.
let us pray silently that Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin will be given a spirit of repentance and may live in true freedom as child of God. Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin, bow your head centrally. Now I invite everyone to please stand. Let us pray to, for Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin, whom God has called, that they may remain faithful to him and barely gives witness to the words of eternal life. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That trusting in the truth of Christ, Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin may find freedom of mind and heart and persevere always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That preferring the folly of the cross to the wisdom of the world, they may glory in God alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that freed by the power of the Spirit, they may be put all fear behind them and press forward with confidence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that transformed in the Spirit, they may seek those things that are holy and just. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we who are faced with the values of the world may remain faithful to the spirit of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the whole world, which the Father so loves, may attain in the church complete spiritual freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sake of our parish, especially Scott Gatley, and for those names that are listed on our altar. And for the deceased, especially Edith Bachman and Joseph Liuzzi. And for Marie Hyde, who was remembered in a special way at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Hail Mary. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, accept our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin to kneel. And I invite the congregation to stand and extend your right hand in blessing over them. Lord God, source of unfailing light by the death and resurrection of Christ, you have cast out the darkness and hatred and lies and poured forth the light of truth and love upon the human family. Hear our prayers for our elect Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin, whom you have called to be your adopted children. Enable them to pass from darkness to light and deliver from the prince of darkness to live always as children of the light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, at your own baptism, the heavens were opened and you received the Holy Spirit to empower you to proclaim the good news to the poor and restore sight to the blind. Pour out the same Holy Spirit on Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin, who long for your sacraments. Guide them along the path of right faith, safe from error, doubt, and unbelief, so that with their eyes unsealed they may come to see you face to face, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Robert, Natalie, Emily, and Robin, the St. Paul's community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God 
which you have shared with us today. Be assured our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. For now, in the peace of Christ, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please be seated. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing together number 137, Gracious God. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
and be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may walk faithfully revert them and present them to you as fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. With the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith. And he has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin to the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, acclaim. By sending down your spirit upon the earth, do fall. So I may become for us the body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took breath and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph William Tobin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, Mary to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you, dear Son, Jesus Christ. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we with the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now in our sins, by the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in, it in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father. On you stay, we tall is back at Amundi. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, he takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. For only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. As we approach the table of the Lord, let us sing together number 662, Loving and Forgiving. Presence 
of the Lord is in this place. Feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can feel the brush of angels wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence Surely the presence Surely the presence Of the Lord Is in this place Sing with me Let us pray. O God, uniting everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may be always pondered what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you all to be seated for the announcements. The Academy of St. Paul will be holding an open house immediately following this Mass until 1 p.m. in the school, and also there will be an open house on Wednesday at 10 a.m. The 50-50 raffle will take place next Sunday after the noon Mass. Please send your tickets in if you haven't done so already. The Knights of Columbus will hold their annual St. Patrick's Day party on March 16th at 6 p.m. at the Hall in Ramsey. Information can be found on the flyers on the bulletin boards in church. And please note, tomorrow's Eucharistic Adoration will conclude at 4 p.m. In, uh, in order for us to set up for the mission in time. Good morning. My name's John Angotti, not Billy Joel. I know many of you thought I was Billy Joel. So <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm going to be leading the mission the next couple of nights. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. As we're at the 11 o'clock hour. I know most people want to get out and go do some stuff. So just briefly. I'm a parent, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I have a daughter that's 27, a son that's 22. I have a grandchild who's one. I know I don't look like a grandfather, but I am a grandfather. And so I get to speak from that perspective as a parent, as well as being a grandparent, as a minister as well of, of music in my parish in Nashville for the last 30 some years. I've been a music director and traveled around the country doing workshops as a songwriter and, and uh, doing a lot of youth conferences when I was younger and those kind of things. But it's important, I find, that we uh, take to heart the why of our faith. When my kids were little, before they'd go to bed, I'd always go in a room and I'd say, give me your five God moments today. Where'd you see God in your everyday life? And they'd tell me why that was. Or no matter where we were, we'd say grace. And I'd say, why do we say grace, kids? I don't know, Dad. I said, because it makes the food taste better. They said, what do you mean? I said, because it gives you a sense of gratitude. 
Whether no matter where you're eating, no matter what you're doing, you have an opportunity to thank the person who made the food, who grew the food, who brought the food, because without those other people, the most important person in your life that you don't even recognize is actually the garbage man. And we don't even think of those people sometimes. And so from a parent's perspective, what I've come to learn is that I cannot give my children faith. Faith is a choice based upon the information that you've learned so far. And what I've come to learn is I haven't learned enough. That what I know of a million note symphony is maybe five notes. As we continue to grow in this mystery of faith. To try to realize where is God in my everyday life. Coming to mass is actually a response to faith. I can't give my children faith. I can only show them my faith of the why it's important. Why did you come to mass today? Why do you believe in God in the first place? What's your story? Because a lot of times homilies, you hear words, 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 preaching, you know, which is great. But if you don't tell me a story, I'm not going to remember it. And it's the stories that we tell our children of why our faith is important that makes it matter in our life so that when you leave this place, that you take a nugget with you, that you go out, that the world may be a little bit different today because now you have become what you receive. We have this Eucharistic uh, revival going on in the country. A lot of times it's about processions and as you're great. But if you don't become it, that stuff don't matter. If we don't put skin around it, if we don't recognize the Christ that lives in us and look at the person next to you right now and tell them you love them. Look at the person next to you, tell them you love them. Look at them. Look at the person next to you, tell them you love them. Right? Now think about the person that gets on your nerves. It could be the person next to you. More than likely, right? And that's where we're called to love because we get on each other's nerves and we upset each other and nobody can agree and we're all divided on political or whatever else. But the one thing that we can be united on is that if I ask anybody in this room what's most important to you in your life, you're gonna tell me one of two things. You're either going to say your faith or your family. And the reality, the truth is that in a court of law, the two things you can't prove exist are God and love. You can't prove that love exists. But we know love exists. And God is love who loves us enough to come to us in this sacrament, to be present in a real tangible way to say, no matter what you're dealing with, I got you. I'm with you. So as we go forth from this place to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving each other. So Monday and Tuesday night will be stories, it will be songs, it will be fun, it will be funny. So if you know folks that have fallen away from the faith or questioning all of it, pick up the phone. Call them. Because that's our job as lay people, to go out into the world to spread the gospel by smiling at one another. So let us leave here with a sense of hope and happiness and bring other folks back Monday and Tuesday. And we'll be filled with faith and be able to create our own stories so that we can tell our children why it's important we're here today. The Lord be with you. Bow down to the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, to sustain the weak. Give light by your ever living light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank you, God. Have a good day. Thank you. And as we go forward, let us sing together number 131 in these days of Lenten journey.